5.54, the time we are just days away from launching into the future of television news in South Florida. Over the past 51 years, we've made a lot of changes, not just in South Florida, but right here in our own downtown Miami studios. You've seen what our future set at Miramar will look like, but take a minute with me to look back. Packing for the big move, I found tapes documenting three decades of WTVJ newscasts that set the standards for the television industry. Here's how we looked 20 the years ago. Report at 6 p.m., South Florida's first and most watched news program. Reach for the world tonight at 11 p.m. with Jim Brosmer and Marianne Kane. Reach for News Weekend with Bob Mayer. Morning in South Florida with Gordon Stevens. And the News at Noon with Robin Carter. 30 years ago, in 1970, our news set was basically a small desk and a background. There was one anchor for each newscast and one huge microphone. Police in Ogden, Utah are holding three suspects. On Lee Vickers was a regular on the news at noon for 20 years. Harry K. Smith anchored Broward News from South Florida's first Broward News Bureau. And that's the regional report from the Yankee Clipper Hotel in Fort Lauderdale. In the early 70s, Prescott Robinson was the top dog on our 11 p.m. news. Hundreds of persons turned out for a day of advice on how not to pollute. By 1973, the Dow was at 839. There was no NASDAQ. Dick Davis handled our business news, and Jim Brosmer was now anchoring the 11 p.m. news. In 1974, Rennick, Bob Weaver, and I check out another new set, a giant four, representing our channel number at the time. In 1975, WTVJ brought electronic news gathering to South Florida and the very first live eye field report. A year later, as our nation celebrated its 200th birthday, we got the pod set, designed to better showcase our new live capability. This is July 4th, 1976. That year also began the long run of entertainment critic Sam Hirsch. With 1979 came more set streamlining to accommodate more live coverage. The 1980s brought us Miami Vice, Anna Asqui and David Jackson, John Hambrick and Susan Lickman, and a succession of brightly colored Art Deco sets. By 1990, with the Dow now flirting with 2,000, even our news opens mirrored the Vice style. And who could forget 1992, when we took our jackets off, left the news desk altogether, and gave the news walking. Through the years, though, a couple of things have remained constant. Bob Weaver and... The five-year veteran inked a multi-year pack with... Yes, it's Tony Segreto, 30 years ago. <laughs> Sorry, Tony, I couldn't resist. As L.A. top Nice hair, by the way. It was fun putting that tape together, yeah. going through all those tapes. Um, you forget. I like the white tie. That white tie. Has well, that was... You uh, still have that, don't you? <laughs> hey, that was July 4th, 1976. That that's why I was dressed in red, white, Keep and blue. Keep making excuses. Very um, good piece. Stay with us, please. Thank you. Some of the <clears throat> stories we're working on for our next half hour. All eyes are on Texas Governor George W. Bush as he prepares to end speculation about his vice presidential running mate. President Clinton back in town and back to work on peace in the Middle East. Bike your way to a healthy body with Fitness Monday. Time now is 5.57, two and a half minutes before 6 o'clock. Weather and metro traffic when we come back. Our old downtown Miami building is starting to look a little bare. But and we, that is an understatement if you saw this building right now. There's nothing here <laughs> except this, folks. But we're not going too far. We'll still be in downtown Miami at the American Airlines Arena, even with all the exciting new beginnings ahead of us. It's really hard to forget the memories made here at 316 North Miami Avenue. Oh, it sure is. This building literally is the birthplace of television in South Florida. And as we complete the last newscast, can you believe that, from this very site and prepare to leave this historic building, senior correspondent Ike Siemens gives us one more look back. At our new state-of-the-art newsroom in Miramar, a series of firsts. At our old newsroom in Miami, a series of lasts. The last time to record memories today. The last appearance by Weeby the Weatherbird before flying to Miramar. I'm happy to go anywhere they take me. The last weather report by Weeby's pal Bob Weaver, who started here 51 years ago. The shark just called in. It's a time for us to go. The last time to have a little fun in the old place. That's it. This is a photographer, Joe Horzinski. He knew uh, Congressman Claude Pepper extremely well. Yeah, it's a sad, sad situation, Mr. Seaman, what they're going to do to this building. All the ghosts are going to fly out when they blow the place up. The last time to remember a place that's been home. A part of our lives, really. 
I watched the new news in second grade, and I sat there the whole time like... A Gator Championship 1996 when I celebrated with all the happy people here. In this room. In this, in this room. My most embarrassing moment in television was here. Uh, you know how at the end of a live shot you're supposed to go, reporting live, Diana Gonzalez, NBC6, I forgot my name. And so I just looked in the camera and said, thank you. <laughs> it was very embarrassing. I met my husband here. Good or bad? Ah, uh, jury's still out on that. <laughs> it's pretty much empty now. This old cramped place used to be filled with complaints about how bad it was. But on this last day, no griping. Scribbled on the walls, farewell messages about the move. Some glad, some sad. In the sports department, Bernie Rosen feels both ways. Been here since 1949. You think it's time to go? Yes, I think it's time to go. Uh, I'll, I'll feel a little sad, but I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, I just think it's time to go. But be honest. Wouldn't you like just one more day? One last time? Oh, yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. You know, as I, as I said, th this building at times infuriated us, made mm -hmm. us angry, but you know what? We knew its blemishes, we knew its scars, it was our building. And it was our home. It, it was really exactly. our second home. Yep. We're so. going to talk more about this as, mm -hmm. we, as we end the show, bring everybody out, uh, but uh, quite a place. Quite a, we all grew up here, didn't we? Yeah, we sure did. Now let's talk about our weather. I guess some changes in the air here. Let's bring in Trina Robinson. Yeah, for sure. We could get a little wet. Seems to me well, we well, gathered well. a few people here, didn't we? We sure have yeah. here on the last newscast <laughs> That's here, right. 316 North Miami <laughs> Avenue. That is the NBC6 News at 11. Jay Leno is next. You know, it certainly feels strange to say this, and honestly, I never thought we would see this day, but this is, as Jackie indicated, our final broadcast from this historic building, 316 North Miami Avenue. 51 years ago, Colonel Mitchell Wolfson and Ralph Rennick had this vision. And from that point on, the tradition was realized right here in this very building. And you're talking about tradition. We're talking about news. We're talking about information. We're talking about community service. It's a tradition that continues. It started 51 years ago. And I am so proud to be part of this wonderful group and this last Great, broadcast at 316. You know, I was born and raised in South <laughs> Florida. I watched WTVJ and dreamed that I would work here. And I am so very... So did I. So did I. In we fact, in 32 common. years ago this month, I set foot in this building, and little did I know that 32 years later I would be sitting in this chair, and it's quite an honor. It really is an honor to be here with all of you. It's great. And as we walk down the steps tonight for the very last time and close the door behind this building, two more doors will open up for us, one in Miramar and one at the American Airlines Arena. As a new era begins, the tradition will continue as we break new ground and pioneer new television news here on WTVJ. Thanks Good night. for the memories. The best is yet to come. Good night, and may the good news be yours. Congratulations to NBC's late night shows on their 14 Emmy nominations.